Good evening, everyone. My name is Michelle, and I'm with the Revolution Club, and I am a defendant. I'm one of the Freeway Nine, and I am one of the UCLA Five. Yeah. And I'm Tala Deloria. I am with the Get Organized for an Actual Revolution Tour, and I was actually a couple days ago just in New York on that leg of the tour. I was just in New York and I had to come back to deal with these court cases. So, the Get Organized for an Actual Revolution Tour is going across the country to New York now, but we're organizing thousands of people to make a revolution. And as part of that understanding, coming from that understanding, we are uniting very broadly with everybody who can be united to drive this fascist regime out of power. And it is from that perspective that we actually did the actions that we did a year and a half ago. So the Freeway Nine are nine people who were slapped with 57 charges. Um, and this is stemming from an action back in 2017, in the fall of 2017, where eight heroic and determined people got on the 101 freeway in downtown LA and brought morning traffic, morning rush hour traffic in, the, in LA. If people don't know this, people from other parts of the country don't know this, it's like bumper to bumper, <laughs> you know? Brought that uh, traffic to a halt, holding a 60 foot banner, 60 feet wide banner that said, Trump, Pence, regime must go. And they were arrested. Eight people were arrested, and nine people were charged, including myself, who I was not on the 101 freeway, but I was charged with conspiracy for what they claim was I planned the whole thing. Um, and through the course of being in court and seeing what's up, why are you charging us? They it was revealed that. And that the LAPD sent in a snitch, a spy, into this church, Echo Park Church, to spy on this organization, to take notes on who are the leaders of the organization, who they're related to, what the license plate numbers of people that were coming to the meetings. And from that, we were charged, um, you know, for for this action, right? And um, so that's what the the basic facts of the, the Freeway 9, which by the way, there was two people, Chantel, who you just saw up here, and Alex, who was also somewhere around here, um, were actually went through trial. And there was a jury that refused to convict them. There was a hung jury. But the prosecutor said, we're gonna, we're gonna try you again. Right? And so, you know, there's three more people, three other defendants, um, who are also about to go to, to trial for those same charges. But that's the Freeway Nine. This one works. Okay, go. So the UCLA Five, which over, oh my God. This, this mic doesn't like me. The UCLA Five, which some of the defendants overlap with the Freeway Nine, UCLA Five, who are now four, are people, Three of us stood up and spoke out against Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin when he came to speak at the UCLA campus. This is a guy who was putting forward the tax bill at that time, and just about the time where he said, where he was bragging about the sanctions that he imposed on North Korea and on Iran, which were part of building for this nuclear brinksmanship which we're seeing coming to a head today. We stood up and spoke out with a lot of content and a lot of heart against what he was saying amidst other protesters who were also there. I was lifted up out of my seat by a cop who was in the aisle behind me, and then the two people who spoke out after me were also arrested. We were charged with things like trespassing, disturbing the peace, resisting arrest, and we were banned from the campus. And we defied that ban. Once, 
because there was a protest of 11 minutes of silence for 11 million immigrants. And this was sounding the alarm for all of what we're seeing today with people in concentration camps. All of this is intensified. And the second time we defied that ban was to see Chelsea Manning speak, famous whistleblower. So we were also charged with defying the ban twice. Some of us are facing over two years in jail. But this is outrageous. This is a part of a whole attack while these universities in particular are rolling out the red carpet for different fascists, not just of this administration, not just of this fascist regime, but also people like Milo Yiannopoulos, people like Heather McDonald, people who say black people should be grateful for slavery. These are the kinds of people that are putting forward these ideas. The universities are rolling out the red carpet for them, and they're coming down on the people who are opposing what they are saying. They're refashioning of the truth. Yeah, and so the UCLA Five are starting trial tomorrow, actually. Um, but I do want to say, like, these charges, all of them, 57 and everything that is happening and has been happening through the course of this whole process is illegitimate. You have, as we've heard several times and as we can see by just looking at what's happening in the world, the people that are sitting in the White House are criminals who are committing crimes against humanity, are threatening people of the world with war and nuclear war, are invading and have invaded countries and are creating the kinds of conditions for the people in Guatemala and Central America and, and you know, these places all over the world to have to seek refuge, to have to force to leave their, their home countries and come and seek refuge to this country just to be met with handcuffs and rip away their child from their arms to put them in concentration camps. And meanwhile, those people are sitting in the White House. Those people are running this country. And the people that are standing up and are sounding the alarm against that are facing charges. This is an illegitimate system. All of this process is illegitimate. And all of those charges should be dismissed and the Trump-Pence regime needs to pack up their bag and get the heck out of the White House. So we are fighting these charges. We are not gonna let this precedent stand because it's yet another time where they're trying to not just chip away, but bludgeon the right to protest against in the face of all of these crimes. And we were actually answering a call, answering a challenge that was put forward by a bacon in that film that Andy Z um, quoted earlier, the Trump-Pence regime must go in the name of humanity we refuse to accept a fascist America, where he says, look, people have to make a choice today between order and increasingly a fascist order and justice. We made our choice and we have to be defended for that choice and we have to put before people that they have to make theirs. So, so then here we are. <laughs> we're, we're starting trial tomorrow, the UCLA Five, and and we need to make this a big deal. The Freeway Nine cases. We had two major articles in the LA Times that actually revealed, you know, that there was an LAPD informant that was sent to this church to spy on us. And also the chief of the LAPD was forced to respond to the fact that they sent in this, this spy on a, you know, to, to spy on us. So we need to make this a big deal. Here we are at a college university where you're supposed to have the kind of debate and discussion about the world, about different ideas and about what is happening and what is the direction in which humanity is going in, right? And when that happened, right, people got lifted out of their chairs. People got banned from a public university for speaking out against crime, crimes against humanity. This whole thing is illegitimate again, right? And so we need to make this a big deal. And so here's a call for people, right, watching on live stream, you know, here in this audience. Let's go get people that actually care, not just to defend us through these cases, but to actually do what refused fascism is calling for and has been calling for to get out into the streets, to take 
take the lead from what Puerto Rico and Hong Kong have been doing, right? Getting out into the streets and demanding that this has to stop. And part of what people were doing, and, and as Alex, who was one of the defendants, has so powerfully said, was that when they got on that freeway in 2017, there was not concentration camps yet. They were not doing what, it was not as horrific as it is today, but they recognized that it actually could have gotten that worse. They recognized that and they put something on the line and they got on that freeway. They overcame fear and uncertainty and they put a lot on the line, their freedom and their lives. At the time, there was those, those laws that were being put in place where you can run over protests if you say that it was an accident. So here we are on the freeway, people got on the freeway and blocked it because they recognized that, there, that this is an urgent situation and to shake people away that are sleepwalking through a night. And so here are some concrete things that people could do is call Mike Fuhrer, the LA city attorney, and demand, don't just say, hey, can you drop the charges? Say, yo, I'm calling to demand to drop the charges against these heroic people that, that disrupted business as usual to stop this nightmare. So here's the number. It's 213-978-8100. And again, 213-978-8100. And that's Mike Fuhrer, the LA City Attorney. And keep calling from wherever you're at in, that you're watching in the live stream here today, go get other people to do the same. And then there's gonna be key days throughout this trial where we're gonna call on people to come to the airport courthouse and to sit in the audience and be there with us. And, you know, and, and let's make this a big deal because, you know, as, as people have made the case and has, have continued to make the case, these are urgent times. And this is actually a challenge that is put before everyone right now. Which side are you on? And you don't have to get on the freeway <laughs> and block traffic in order to, to join this movement, but you do actually have to pick a side. And right now, our side is way too silent. Is there anything you want to add before we? I think that's true. Okay, so thank you very much. Yeah.